as a longtime Fuji X100 user. I love using these cameras primarily because I can enjoy photography without the pressure of taking an Instagram worthy photo. And now with the X106, the camera has evolved into a true hybrid camera, taking on all the best features of the X-T5, like its 40 megapixel sensor, beefy subject detection system, 6K video, combined with the internal four stop ND filter, six stop IBIS, and so much more. After spending a week with the Fuji X106, I can tell you, this is the biggest single leap in performance from any generation of the X100 line. But the funny thing is, my love for these cameras really had nothing to do with how good the technology is or how it stacked up to other mirrorless cameras at the time. Last year, I made a video called My Favorite Camera of All Time. I know it sounds clickbaity, but I, I, you know, I was unintentionally contributing to the hype on the X100V and the, the hype that it's received over the past couple years. But truthfully, that wasn't my intention. I, I truly meant that. My love for these cameras goes way back to when I was in police academy around nine years ago. Uh, I pulled the trigger on the X100S thanks to Digital Rev TV. I'm sure a lot of you guys can also relate. The X100S quickly became my most used camera because I, I documented my life and 90% of my photos were of my daughter. The problem that I had was that when she learned how to walk, the autofocus of the X100S could not keep up. I even used it professionally when I was doing engagement and wedding photos back in the day. I would keep my telephoto lens on my Fighting Mark III and I would bring the X100S as like my supplementary 35 millimeter lens. The autofocus always struggled especially in backlit situations. So I ended up getting rid of it eventually to fund my switch from the Fighting Mark III to the A7 II. Now, fast forward six years, I picked up the X100V, which is what I'm holding right here. And it was everything I wanted the X100S to be. Sharper images, shot wide open at F2, and good usable autofocus. That was it. I didn't need this camera to outperform or closely stack up to any of my Sony mirrorless cameras. This, it's not why I picked, this, this is not why I picked up the X100 camera. And I would assume that that goes for a lot of you out there. After four long years of endless hype and people overpaying for used X100 Vs, Fuji finally announced the six that can now legitimately be used in a professional setting as a, you know, as a professional camera, at least in my opinion. But I know a lot of people that have already been using this one as professional camera. It's, but that's just my opinion. What's not my opinion is how good my Lightroom portrait presets are for color grading photos. This video is not sponsored. So if you want to support the channel, you can go ahead and check those out. If not, it's, it's cool. I just hope that both sides of your pillow are warm for you tonight. Now what's new on the six? Well, it's pretty much the same exact body with the guts of an X-T5 and IBIS. It has the same 40 megapixel X-Trans sensor with X-Processor 5 that I kind of expected to see by looking at the history of the X100 line and how the tech has trickled down from other cameras to the X100. I, I predicted this was gonna happen. What's that noise? This is gonna give you much more resolution with more room to crop and i think that this is especially useful on a camera like this with a fixed lens it also shares the same autofocus system with the same beefy subject detection system you got cars planes human or animal everything and you also get touch tracking you get about 95 percent of the same video specs up to 6.2k at 30p but no open gate you can shoot up to 4k 60 but with a slight crop you also get 1080p at 240 frames per second. You get both F-Log and F-Log 2. What makes the X106 a unique camera for video is obviously it's pretty powerful now. It's got IBIS, but it has a built-in four-stop ND filter. The same one that's in the X100V. Now, this is something, and you can use it for both photo and video. This is something that is usually reserved for more expensive cinema cameras. Now, I don't think that there is another camera on the market that offers 
what the X106 offers as a hybrid camera, right? So with the ND filter, you're now able to get, you're able to maintain your 180 degree shutter rule when shooting video. So that means that you can leave the house and you don't need to bring any ND filters because it has it all in here. With IBIS now, you, your micro, the micro jitters are not gonna be out of control like it is on the, on the V, so you're gonna be able to get some decent handheld video. Autofocus is beefed up, it's better than this one, and, but also I did a overheating test, and I got up to 25 minutes in 4K60 on the six, versus on the five, on the V, I, I can't even get 25 minutes used in 4K30. This, this, was, this is a hot box right here, this, four, this X100V. So I can see this camera being a decent video option for people out there because of this all-in-one package. So you got a 35 millimeter mini cinema camera, because everything's a cinema camera nowadays. That is a very unique package, especially comparing it to the competition, whether or not you want to see it as competition. The Leica Q2, Q3, this offers something that uh, most cameras don't offer. Now, one interesting thing about the X106 is that it has the same exact lens of the X100V. And the first thing that popped up in my head was, can it resolve that extra detail? Since it wasn't designed initially for a 40 megapixel sensor, it was designed for that 26 megapixel sensor. So I took it to the studio and I took some comparison shots. Since this is such a new camera, I couldn't open up the raw files. So looking at the straight out of camera JPEGs, I do see an improvement in overall sharpness and clarity in the 40 megapixel files when zooming in. But that's really it for now. When I first took the X106 out of the box, it looked nearly identical to the X100V. And I don't know why I was hoping there was some kind of change to the body, something. Something new, since it's pretty much, it looked, it's looked the same for so many years. But I guess if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But still, still the, the camera, you know, it's still hard to hold without any kind of accessory, a grip accessory. But then again, that would contribute to it being more bulky. If you look at both X100 side by side, there are very few, very few small changes to with the button, the buttons and the placement of those buttons. But the one thing that really stood out to me was the weight and how the camera felt in my hand. The S106 weighs about 43 grams more and you can definitely feel it. Like this is all thanks to the new IBIS mechanism that we've, they were somehow able to squeeze into this camera without making it substantially larger. It's pretty much, you know, but it just feels more heft in the hand. It feels great actually. It feels better in the hand. It feels less of a toy feels more of a premium kind of camera. Fuji says that you can get up to six stops when using the EVF and the rear screen. And then if you're using the optical viewfinder, you get around 5.5 stops. I didn't have time to test it. I've only had it for a week, but this is a feature that so many have wanted. And I personally didn't think, I personally didn't think it was possible to squeeze IBIS along with a physical ND filter into such a small body. Now. Just for a second, imagine if Sony were to follow suit and do this to the popular RX1R uh, fixed lens camera that also has recently become so popular on, on YouTube and you can't buy it nowhere. But imagine if they were able to do something like this. Oh, man, that'd be huge, but I digress. Now, almost everything else is the same. Has the same EVF resolution, OVF setup where you can put the little, uh, the little screen in the corner. Got the same four stop ND filter. It has the same three inch LCD that can tilt slightly lower this time. Same ports, same one SD card slot, same battery, same overall ergonomics. Now you do get the new Reala Ace film simulation that is only available right now on the GFX 102, I believe. It now has a lower ISO sensitivity, it's 125 versus 160 on this one. And now you got a max shutter speed of 180,000 of a second. Fuji is pricing the X106 at $1,600, which is $200 more than the X100V. But when you think about it, it's not terrible. Like for one, people 
are, are out here paying or have been paying more for the X100V or older versions of this camera on eBay and will probably continue to do so if this one gets back ordered for a long time. Also, considering the improvements and the features of the 6 and how it now compares to any other fixed camera on the market, right? I think the small price hike is warranted, but I guess it just depends on who you are and what you use this camera for. And like I said before, as a longtime X100 user, the X100V, it just was that, it hit that sweet spot for me, right? I didn't need blazing fast autofocus or extremely high resolution photos. I think the 26 megapixel sensor is more than enough for taking candid shots of my daughter or just taking snaps around town, documenting my life. As a video creator and camera reviewer, I will be purchasing one for myself, but I can't say, I cannot say that I would feel the need to upgrade if I wasn't going to benefit from making videos on this camera for YouTube. Fuji will be sending me a long-term loaner pretty soon, so expect a lot more Fuji X100 6 content on this channel. Uh, a lot of on-location photo shoots now that it's finally getting warmer outside. I can finally go out. I've been cooped up just much too long. I need the vitamin D and also I need to do more on location stuff for you guys. So uh, stay tuned for, stay tuned for that.